Many thanks to PPA for sponsoring this week's video. I've got a quick question for you. If I were to ask you what raw color profile you edit your photos in, what would you say? Well, if you're anything like me, you'd answer with something to the effect of the default profile or the standard profile, of course. It wasn't until the, the last couple of years that I even paid attention to the color profile in which I was editing photos in, but it's been a highly requested topic lately in the morning blaze. So I wanted to, to dig into the nitty gritty of it all for those that are wondering if they're using the best possible color profile for their photos. And based on the incredible response to the raw photo editing guide I created for my video a few weeks ago, I decided to do it again and make a guide covering all the differences between the Lightroom color profiles that are gonna be covered in this video. So that way you don't have to you know, try and, and write them down during the video or try and remember them during the video. And that link will be in the description below if you'd like to download that. Now, before we jump right into it, it's important to understand that profiles allow you to control how the colors and tones of a photograph are rendered. And these color profiles, they don't change and they don't overwrite any of your existing slider adjustments, they're really just meant to serve as a, a starting point for editing your photos. So there's seven, did I say that right? There is seven different profile sections inside of Lightroom. And the very first one is your raw profiles. So if you come up here, or if I come up here to a raw photo, you can see .raf, which is a Fuji raw file. I'm gonna come up to the develop module. And in the basic section, I already had it open, but in the basic section, you'll see something very small that says profile, and more than likely it will say Adobe Color. It is a drop down menu, but I never use that. I always like to select these four boxes, and I would recommend you select those four boxes as well. You'll see why in just a minute, but it's gonna give you access to the entire profile browser. And it's a great way to see kind of before and after and compare all the different profiles at the same time. So I'm gonna select that and you can see all of the different profiles right here. So for the time being, I'm going to skip the favorite section. I'm gonna come right down here to Adobe Raw. And I'm gonna go ahead and open that up and you can see all of the different Adobe Raw color profiles. And of course you have to have a raw file to access this. So if you're trying to do this with a JPEG or a PNG, you won't have access to this. So it's got to be a raw file. So as you can see, Adobe Color in the upper left-hand corner, this is actually the default for raw photos and it, get, it provides a good balance between color and tone. And what's really cool is as I hover over these, it automatically changes them all. Now, Adobe Monochrome, as you can tell, it's black and white, and this is the default for black and white photos. It's an, and it has an ideal kind of tone shift that's perfect for black and white work. Adobe Landscape, which is very popular, of course, for landscapes, which saturates all colors, but specifically enhances blues and greens. And as I kind of go back and forth between Adobe Color and Adobe Landscape, you can kind of see the shift. It's very very subtle, but there is definitely a big, <laughs> it is definitely a difference, not necessarily a big difference. But if I come over to Adobe Neutral, Adobe Neutral definitely reduces saturation and contrast. It's more of a flat look and it's, it's really meant for providing additional headroom for, for photo editing. So if you have a photograph that you might need to push further in a, uh, from an editing perspective, a neutral profile is definitely something that you might want to go for. Or an image that's got that really extreme dynamic range, a neutral profile might be best for that as well. And then you have Adobe Portrait, which is a, has a subtle, subtle tone curve applied to it, and it does render skin tones very, very nicely. Adobe Standard, which used to be the default in previous versions of Lightroom. And then you have Adobe Vivid, which adds vibrance, it adds contrast, it, and it renders natural skin tones. What's kind of interesting is if you go to the old default, which is Adobe Standard, and you compare it to Adobe Color, which is the new standard, kind of go back and forth here, you can see that the, the old default was a little bit bit softer, less contrast, less uh, saturation to the colors. Adobe Color definitely has more contrast and a little boost to maybe vibrance or saturation, but I found that to be a little bit interesting. And you can kind of compare the two just by hovering. So go to Adobe Vivid, and go to Adobe Landscape. You can see that Vivid definitely has more of a punch to it and go back and forth and you can just kind of hover over any of these right here. Now, if I want to change this say to Adobe Neutral, you just click on it, but you will not have access to this slider right here. And this slider I think is really, really cool. The slider gives you the ability to, I should say, alter the impact of the, or the overall effect, but it's only available in the other profiles, not, not, not the raw profile. So you won't have access to that, but I'll show you in just a minute where you will. So Adobe Color, that is going to be the standard most of the time. I'm not 100% certain which Lightroom version you might be using, but in the version that I have, 
Adobe Color is the standard profile. Now the next profile is something called Camera Matching Profiles, and this is super, super cool. So once again, let me just hit the shortcut key I, so you can see that this is a, a raw file, a .dng. This was captured with a Sony a7R II many, many moons ago. But if I come over here, I have the profile browser open. Let me just hit close to show you. So you can see the profile here. I'm gonna hit the four little boxes, and now I'm gonna come down here to Camera Matching. And what Camera Matching is, you can see all of these different um, profiles right through here now. And Camera Matching is basically, the designed to, I guess, mimic or to replicate the preset styles that are found in your specific camera. So this is a Sony camera, an older one, they might have been changed uh, by now, but you can see clear, deep, light, landscape, neutral, portrait, vivid, and standard. And if I still had that Sony a7R II, I could look in the menu system and those picture profiles would match these right here, which is really, really cool. Here's another neat example. This is a, if I hit the shortcut key I, this is a .raf, which is a Fuji RAW file. And now you can see all of the Fuji film simulations are in here. Classic Chrome, Eterna, uh, Previa, Velvia, all of the different acros, all the different black and white film simulations are all right here, which is super, super nice. So the, the camera matching profiles are fantastic. And if, if I had my Fuji camera out, I could look at those film simulations on the specific camera and they would all match this right here, which is really nice. And what's cool is you can, of course, hover over any of these and it will give you a quick representation of what that might look like. But if I select, say, Classic Chrome, I still do not have access to this right here. You're not gonna get access in the RAW or the camera matching profiles, but everything else that we're about to cover, you will. But I think that this is very, very nice to be able to do, to be able to have access to camera matching right inside of Lightroom. So you don't have to actually make that change in camera and take your photos. You can always change it afterwards. Now, the next profile is something called Artistic Profiles, and this is a lot of fun to play with as well. This is a photograph from uh, Olympic National Park, which you can see up here, but this is a JPEG file. This is not a RAW file. Let me just turn that off. Now, as you can see, I am still in the profile browser. If I hit close, you'll just see right here, profile, color, and you'll have these four little boxes. Open that up, and I can come down here to the artistic section. And the artistic section is meant to apply a kind of a stylistic effect rather than a really a neutral starting point. And it can be applied to all file formats. So we can just hover over all of these. And what's really nice, and I kept kind of alluding to this, let's just find one we like right here. I think that, I think this one looks kind of good, but it does look a little bit overdone. And a lot of these artistic uh, uh, profiles, in my personal opinion, are pushed a little bit further than than I, I prefer, but that's really where this uh, the, the kind of fine-tuned slider comes in. And as you can see up here, now I have this at my disposal. So if I, it starts at 100, if I wanted to crank it up, I could, but usually I would kind of take it down to, you know, a fair amount to maybe something around right here. And if I kind of toggle this on and off, you can see what that change has done. So having access to the amount slider is absolutely fantastic. But as I hover over all of these, they're just label artistic one, two, three, four, five, and we can uh, go through all of these right through here. But they're a lot of fun to play with and just kind of give you a different creative way to possibly edit your photo. Now I do want to pause real quick and just thank the sponsor of this week's video, which is Professional Photographers of America, or PPA for short. Now I know I've mentioned this on quite a few occasions over the years, but one of the top reasons why I'm a member of PPA is their straightforward approach to insuring camera gear. They offer up to $15,000 worth of coverage with a $50 deductible for repairs and a $350 deductible for full replacement of equipment loss. This gives me the piece of mind knowing my gear is protected not only from damage, but also theft or any other unforeseen event that may occur. And with a PPA membership, you'll also receive data loss negligence and malpractice protection with PPA's indemnification trust, along with professional development tools designed to help you grow your skills with mentorship programs and even portfolio reviews. So join a community of over 35,000 photographers and check out the link in the description below for a special discount on your PPA membership today. So to carry on, the next profile is one, it's called black and white, and this one is a lot of fun to play with. If, you, if you've never really dabbled in the, the world of black and white photography, you would be flabbergasted as to how many different black and white styles there actually are. So let's go to a new photograph. Uh, let me close down artistic and we'll have black and white right here. And as you can see, there's 17 different profiles here. Open this up. And as I hover over any of these, they are all different. 
every single one of these is a different look. So let's just find one. I, would, I don't do a whole lot of black and white photography, but I definitely like a softer look. Um, there was one up here I really, really enjoyed. Uh, let's just leave it at this one right here, black and white 05. And we have access to the amount slider again, so we can turn it all the way up to 200. It's gonna start at 100 or we can just dial it down to something to about right here. And I think that that looks pretty nice right there. But this is basically meant to emulate, or I should say the ones at the bottom here, see where it says blue filter, green filter, orange and yellow filter and red filter. Those are meant to emulate filters that were used in the film days. So you have blues and yellows and you can use any of these as well. So if you're not shooting film and you're shooting digital, but you wanna try and get that, the, that type of a look, you can definitely do that right here, which is nice. Now the second to the last profile is the modern profile. And this is uh, this one is the, probably the one that I spend the least amount of time in. It's probably one that uh, I don't think I've ever actually even used it. I, I've played around with it a little bit, but it just creates looks that I don't necessarily love perhaps, but there are a couple in there that are pretty interesting. So I'm gonna come up here, let's just, uh, Let's just close this down. Let's go to another photo right here from the Dolomites. I'm going to click the four little boxes right here in the basic section, close down black and white, and let's move down here to the modern profiles. And as I hover over these, you can see what they are doing. I think this one, one of these down here, actually I think modern 10 is kind of more in line with what I like, a softer, more subdued type of a look. But these modern profiles are meant to emulate current photography styles. So this right here, um, I definitely don't like that one at all. But these right here, as you can see, you know, that's kind of a more high key look a little bit. This is a more punchy look. These down here are a little bit softer, kind of like the modern nine and modern 10 as well. But once again, we can select it and we have access to the slider. If you want to turn up the effect, you definitely can. If you want to dial it back a little bit, you can as well. Now the final profile is the vintage profile. And there's one in here that I absolutely love. And I use it more, uh, way more often than I ever even talk about. And it, I'll, I'll show you real quick. I'll just quit rambling about it. Let me go to the next file right here. It's from the Outer Banks of North Carolina from a few months ago. I'll click the four little squares, close down modern, and we're gonna go over here to vintage. And it's vintage is meant to replicate or emulate, I should say, past analog looks. And as I kind of scroll over these, you can see what they're doing. Definitely more subdued, but a very drastic difference from the original. I kind of like that right there. But this one right here, Vintage 2, I really love what it does to greens. As I kind of go back and forth between Vintage 1 and Vintage 2, you can see that. So I think it's definitely a little bit overdone, but we have access to the slider right here and kind of pull it back a little bit. If I toggle this on and off, you can see what that's doing. It's very, very subtle. Let me pull it up to a little bit more just so you can actually see the difference before and after, before and after. But it definitely has a very soft, kind of a painterly look to it, but I really, really like what it does to greens. I think it's a very nice effect. So those are the seven color profiles inside of Lightroom. And I'm, I'm more than likely a lot of people are, don't even know that that section is there. It is very small. It's very kind of hidden amongst all the chaos inside of Lightroom. So if you've never used it before, I do hope that you found some helpful information in this week's video that you can possibly test out or apply or maybe just experiment on your own photos at home. So I do hope you enjoyed this week's video and be sure to check out the link in the description below for additional information on a PPA membership. And as always, if you have any questions, please leave those in the comments section below and I will do my best to get back in touch with you as soon as humanly possible. And what else, what else? If you did enjoy this week's video, if you could give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And as always, I really do appreciate you carving out a little bit of time to spend it with me here today and I will see you all next Wednesday.